Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Power Hour. Yes, the show with me, Ron Harris, and the only, the one and only, Giles Tiger Thomas, all the way from the United Kingdom. This week, we're going to be talking about the Detroit Pro coming up in a couple days, but I think there actually was a Detroit Pro many, many years ago, once or twice, but it's back. It's happening this Sunday. It's being promoted by Fuad Abiyad of He's got his YouTube channel. He does that bro chat, very famous. Uh, he's got Hostile cool. Nutrition. He's got Samson Dowda under contract. Sam Solik, the biggest media <laughs> sensation in bodybuilding right now. So Fouad, uh, obviously one of the key figures in our industry right now, giving back $25,000 first prize. Uh, he's only having one division. It's a pro-am, so there's every amateur class, but only men's open bodybuilding, which is very ambitious of him. Uh, it's a short list. And I want to start with the one guy who is not on the list, who should be on the list. And we're speaking on Wednesday morning. I messaged him yesterday. He did not answer me about this show, but he made a cryptic post. I'm talking about Tony O'Burton, the predator. Uh, do I got him on screen now? Is he on there? Yeah. Okay. So let's see, I think he posted some pictures. No, there's his dragon farmer. There's his sponsor. No. Oh, he did he already? Okay, here it is. So this is. This is how he looked in Brazil. He came very close, very close to Rafael Brondeo. Mm -hmm. um, I think Rafael had him. Mm -hmm. Rafael's condition wasn't as good. And he's, he's clearly had a couple meals here since then because he was much sharper than this at the show. Uh, but Tonya looked fantastic at Arnold South America in Brazil. We all thought, you know, if for some reason he doesn't, he doesn't take this show, he doesn't beat Rafael, he should absolutely – Go on one week later. It was actually only six days later. Uh, no, no, a week and one day. Sorry, eight days. My math is poor, as you know. Uh, but he really should be at their show. And there's still a chance he might jump in. It's $25,000, not chump change. If you were Tony O'Burton, Giles, what, what would you do in this situation? I really, really don't understand why he's not doing this. I mean, I actually put a message on the thing and I said, uh, I'll pay for an Uber. <laughs> For wherever he has to go, because like, why would you? I don't understand. Is he? Is this like some publicity stunt where he's just going to show up at the last minute and he's going to uh, he's going to do a haddie and just pop up and you know, like you know, I have like conspiracy theories. Uh, but like, maybe. why would he not do this? Because I mean, I did have Raphael winning. Um, yeah. He commented. Um, I put a comment and I said, uh, I forget what Instagram account it was, and I said, yeah, Raphael has. Uh, Tonio has both back shots because his back is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, yeah. it's it's amazing. Readable bicep, relaxed spread. I mean, it's, it's hard to beat on that one. I think he's comfortable because that's, that's kind of Raphael's weakness. And I think he destroyed Raphael in those two shots. Mm. Um, plus the condition, the glutes and everything like that. But the side, um, Raphael is unbelievable in. And the front, I think he, you know, he comfortably took him. So it's kind of two to one. And he said, he made a comment saying that Raphael's uh, stomach was hanging out in the side shots. Now, I've watched that video like four or five times and I personally didn't see it. Hmm. Um, but that was that particular video that he was commenting on. So I thought he was commenting on, he was actually commenting on probably what he saw, what he felt he saw on the day, not on that video, because you can't really see it. Um, but uh, why, if he's that close, um, why would he not do this? Because thing is, if he's going to the New York Pro, I mean, let's be honest, he ain't going to beat Nick Walker. Uh, no, I don't think so. He's no. not going to beat Nick Walker. I mean, so really, what's the, he's not going to qualify there. He's the, the best, really, he can hope for is second place. And what if somebody else comes in that's, you know, even better than him? He's he's going to get, what, third, fourth? I mean, I think I think seconds, if I was a betting man, that's a good shot, that, that arch pope. Yeah. Um, you know, he's really, really good. So why did why would he not? Because he said, talked about going back and forth. Now, don't forget, Samson's done that when it's been back and forth to America. Right. Do you remember the Arnold Classic in Boston when he got, um, was it fourth and fourth? Yeah. He, he, I said to him, I said, surely you're going to stay. It's only one week later. Surely you're going to stay out in America. And he says, no, no, no. Um, um, Marlene has got to get back to work. Ah, so, we, right. so he flew back on the Tuesday. And I think he flew back on the Friday. Crazy. So right. he's talking about like flights and, you know, and being hassled and stuff like that. But, you know, it's only a bloody, what, one, two, I mean, what's the, what's the maximum four hour flight in anywhere in America it's going to be? He lives in Nevada. This show is in Michigan. I'm guessing that's about Where's, a two hour flight. Where's Michigan on the East Coast? No, Michigan's in the middle of the country. Right. So oh, yeah, I mean, two hours, two hours max. Three yeah. hours at the very most. There's no way it's more than that. I, I don't understand. So, so really, I mean, this is, it's kind of, it's, I'm not saying it's going to be an easy win for him, but it, well, it would be, <laughs> it would be oh, an easy I mean, win for him, you know? He almost beat, I didn't, he didn't almost beat, but he was toe-to-toe -to -toe with the guy who just took third to Hadi Chupan and Samson Dauda. Yeah, you know, we yeah. got a couple other big names doing this, but no okay. disrespect to them. I don't see... I don't see them taking out Tonio if Tonio showed up looking like this. 
you know? Do you know what? Just looking at this footage here, I don't know whether someone's just filmed that on their phone. It, he looks even more impressive here. Yeah, this looks. I awesome. mean, he is. I, he's another one that. I mean, his eighth place at the Olympia last year. I didn't see that one coming. You know, before before the show, but absolutely, he deserved that. He looked. He was one of the ones few that really nailed it as well at the Olympia last year. Mm. Um, I just. Um, I mean, his legs and his back are absolutely phenomenal. I just wish I would like to see because for me he is like um, I said a couple of years ago in my MD column he is kind of like a like a Dexter Jackson 2.0 and I think he's right. I think he could be as good you know I'm not I'm not saying he win the Olympia and Arnold's and you know because I mean Dexter was an anomaly 29 pro shows but I mean he's really he's going to be up there do you know what I mean he's going to be one of those guys that could be in a, in a year or two he he's he's got the potential to be like a top six Olympia guy because don't forget Dexter. Um, his first pro show was when he took seventh at the 1990 Arnold Classic and then. Kind of by 2000, 2002 was when he won his first pro show. That was the British Grand Prix, beat Dennis James. Mm -hmm. That was there. And then, of course, he just got better and better and better and better. And I think Tony has got that potential as well to be at that level. Like I said, I don't know if he'll win 29 pro shows. I think that's 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 unheard of. But I um, we're ever going to see that again. But. I'd like to see a bit more chest on him because for me, his, his back is so good. Correct. Like his, his back is exceptional. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's one of the best backs in the pro league right now. What do you think? I, I'm, I was like racking my brain trying to figure out who might have a better back. I really couldn't think of anybody. You know, Lunsford's got a fantastic back, but this is yeah. right up there. Yeah. Yeah. Right up there. He's big. He's separated. It's top to toe detail. He's, your lower lats are nice and thick. Um, he's impressive. Like I said, I, he's another one I didn't, I didn't, you know, because he kind of, he was kind of moving up, but then he just did this big jump in the last year or two and he won the, like I said, won the New York Pro. You know, but um, I think uh, uh, the reason I was saying, well, another reason I'm saying you should do to pro Detroit and he's going up in New York Pro, he's got to qualify. So yeah. if he's got that, if he's not going to, if he's not going to qualify at the New York Pro, which is unlikely because if Nick Walker shows up, it's it's a fight for second place. Let's be yeah. honest. I mean, there's yeah. no one in that on the radar that's, you know, even considering doing the New York Pro that is anywhere near Nick Walker. Right. So where's he going to qualify? He's just going to have to keep competing. He's probably going to have to come to Europe or, I mean, I haven't looked at the calendar, so I don't know, but um, he's going to probably have to do a few shows where he could have probably gone to Detroit, won it. And then he's got plenty of time to shut it down. But now he's going to be after, well, I mean, when's the New York Pro? How many weeks? So it's less than six weeks away now. It's five yeah, so weeks away. From, yeah, five and a half weeks away. He's got to be on prep for at least another six to eight weeks. And then that's going to really roll. That's going to get very, very close to when he'd want to start prepping for the Olympia. Yeah, I, I so, strongly suspect he's going to pull a fast one. Yeah, and, uh, we're like I said, we're doing this Wednesday morning. Uh, I would not be surprised if by the end of today the score sheet's updated. His name yeah. is on it. It should be. It's why would you want to prep again when you're already in shape? It's a short flight. It doesn't. It would make no sense personally for me for him not to do Detroit. So I'm operating under the assumption that even though he's not on that list right now that he will be by the time he'll be on that stage. So let's hope so. You know me, Mr. Conspiracy Theory. Do you think he's going to do a Nick Walker that Nick Walker did last year when I think he had every intention of doing the Arnold Classic, trying to get the bump, the prize when he bumped up in 23? No. Because I said that, didn't I? I said to you, I said, I said that Nick Walker was doing the, New York, uh, the, the, the Arnold Classic all along. I think he was just holding out because he wanted to get the prize money bumped up, which then got taken by bloody Samson. That's always said. Like, Samson really should... Thank Nick Walker for getting him an extra 100K because I think it was Nick Walker holding off that got that prize money bumped up. Like I said, there's a lot of what ifs, and it's just, I mean, I've, I've got no basis of fact there. But um, they're not going to bump you, up, they're not going to change the prize money for the trade. No, 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 no I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking oh, about okay. do you think he's doing it as a way to build a bit of hype and he's got any, he, he's, he's intended to do this all along? What do you think? What's it, what's it, what's he got to gain though from doing that? No, I think he's got plenty of hype coming off that South America show, the Arnold South America. Mm. I don't. I honestly don't know what's going through his head. I, I wish he had messaged me back. It's been yeah uh, fifteen hours since I messaged him and haven't heard back. <laughs> I, did, I did have two numbers for him. I didn't use both of them. So, but mm. let, let's move on to the Martian because we know for sure he's in the show yeah. and he's a front runner. Martin Fitzwater, uh, living in Dallas, Texas area. Now this is twenty days out that we're looking at right now. So it's obviously good. he wasn't quite dialed in. Still had good. still had some fat to drop there. This was four days ago. Uh, I'm still not like astounded by the condition I'm seeing in that shot. It's not the greatest picture. He hasn't been doing a ton of updates compared it's to bloody that. good, mind you. Looks but, fantastic. Uh, really so this was five days ago. Mm. Yeah, I mean we've seen him a couple times. That Texas show that he's done was he done Texas twice, both years now. 
I think so. Yeah, that was that was not his first show that he got. That was that the first was, year. Yeah, that was first year when Andrew Jack. Well, Andrew Jack has won both times. Yes, uh, but he was yeah. damn good and prepped by Branch Warren that year too. This yeah, was I, th I think that um, fourth place at the Old UK really kind of knocked him because he, he didn't seem to. He hasn't been around since then. I think that really. I think he expected to come in and win that one. And Andrew Jack won that one as well. That was the right. 23 Arnold Classic. Andrew right. Jack, who was um, James Hollinshead beat him as well, I think, didn't he? Was he Hollinshead was in it. But, um, yeah, I remember he got um, – Patrick Johnson was second. Was Hollinshead third, him fourth, and then I think um, I think Jamie the Giant was sixth or fifth. I can't I mean, remember. Anyway. I mean, yeah. He shouldn't, but, he shouldn't um, let these things bother him so much because, I mean – Fourth, you know, a fourth place in a show like that to big names like that, it doesn't mean that you suck. I mean, yeah, you want to win, you train to win, but it shows that you hung with the top guys in the world. You know, he's mm. he's on his way up up the ranks. Well, okay. well, he's used it to kind of fire himself up because he looks fantastic here. I mean, he's um, and I, I think I felt really, I think there's a lot of support for him to win this because he didn't get the invite to the Arnold Classic. Two forty three, and I think, and I think he really did deserve that invite to the Classic. Because imagine, you know, putting it out there that you want to do it, and you started prepping, and then you don't get the call, and then the list comes out. And thing is, there was names on there that hadn't even because you got to win a pro show to be invited to the Arnold Classic, and you had Ruby L, um, and obviously we had Haddy and Andrew Jack who had won pro shows, um, but you had like guys on there, a horse MD who hadn't won a pro show that was also invited that also didn't show up. Yeah. So you had four. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I going back to the Arnold Classic. I think they should invite more guys anyway. But um, I, I think he, I, I think uh, people are going to be especially happy for him if he comes in this, um, you know, and say Tony doesn't show up or does, and then he Martin still wins. I think people are going to be really happy for him because, like I said, it was, uh, you know, he, I think he was a bit gutted when he didn't get that invite. Yeah, I mean, it, I felt bad as people started dropping out of the Arnold. I was like, oh my god, and they didn't, they did not call. Give, yeah, why didn't they say, well, we just lost two, three. I think they ended up losing four competitors altogether from that. Yeah, show. Horse MD. Oh, sorry, Hadi did show up, didn't he? Because it was like it was touch and go because they said visa pending. Uh, Ruby L, Andrew Jackson, and who was the other one? Oh, the, the guy who, the, the amateur guy that won that, in, that there was no mention of. Oh, uh, that's right. Uh, yeah. I, I, uh, rough. Uh, gosh. I I'm sure there was another one as well. Yeah, of course. I can't remember his name. I know exactly who you mean. He was, he had won the Arnold Amateur the year before. Yeah. Black guy. Yeah. He a little bit nice yeah. shape and stuff. Yeah. The shape just wasn't, wasn't huge. Probably realized he needs, needs to take some time off and, and put some size on. But yeah, Martin, Martin right now is for sure the front. He's my favorite along with one other guy. Mm. Who definitely, definitely has a chance to win this for sure. We're talking about Vito, Vitaly Ogulnikov. The world knows him as Good Vito. I go to the stories first because that's usually where you get the most current updates, but it's a lot of times it's just them holding a supplement can or something. <laughs> yeah. So it's in Russian. So, yeah, I think he might have actually changed his name illegally to Good Vito. Really? Uh, well, the score sheet said Vitali, and the last name <laughs> and the last name it said Good Vito. It didn't say Ogolnikov. Oh, wow. wow. Okay, an cool. Andrew jacked on the scorecards. It, it says Chenedu Obika. Yeah, yeah it, has his, it has his real name. It doesn't have Andrew Jack, so I'm wondering. Do you, I'm going to ask you, though, do you, do, you think, do you think he lived up to the hype? Because um, obviously there was a lot of little speculation. I mean, we were speculating. It's like, look, is this guy just another Instagram bodybuilder that looks incredible, like Mr. Olympia on on, on, uh, on Instagram, and then turns up and it's like, uh, do, you, do you think he lived up to the hype? He did. He did. Mm. Remember, you know, the tan looked awful, but here we are seeing a very brief, very two-second clip of much much crisper resolution. You can see the condition. You can appreciate a lot more here than you could on the live stream. The tan doesn't even look as bad here in this resolution. Yeah. It's, thing is, though, like, like say uh, Samson at the um, the Arnold Arcade of the week. When I because I was I was still here in uh, sat here on the Friday night watching the prejudging on the live stream, and then I saw him with Ronnie at the the finals on the Saturday. And remember, I was like, oh look, at oh, Samson's shoulders. The shine looks really bad. The lower ab is distended. I don't know whether he just magically somehow got a magic wand and fixed that overnight, but when I was there, I didn't see any of that. Like the, mm. um, you know, so, you know, so like you, you look at a live stream and look, the tan looks bad and this looks bad, that looks bad, and then you see them in the high resolution stuff or you're actually there and they look absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I, I, do you know what I like to see? I like, because we see guys with big legs all the time, but look at the condition in his legs. Yeah. Like I love to see, you know, guys that just don't just rely on just, you know, having genetically gifted body parts that obviously they work their asses off on, but the fact that he got them so lean and so dry, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a huge, huge achievement. 
Yeah, and you know, there were a ton of posts. I did a little quick video. Um, when did I do it? Monday. Talking about, or Sunday, I'm sorry, about, you know, Tony Tonio versus Rafael. Who did you have? Because a lot of people did express that they had Tonio winning. But in the comments, there was a fair amount of people that thought Vito should have won the show. Vitali. Um, I, I, I didn't, I, I personally didn't see it. But I mean, because when I, on the next day, when I saw the, because I didn't see the finals, I was in bed. Yeah. Um, the um, When I saw this this picture of the two of them, I thought, oh, shit, did, did he somehow jump up to second place? Yeah. You know, because I thought it was him and Rafael called out last. But I tell you what, he's. He de- he's very much improved. I think um, he's, he's going to be a work in progress. He's a young guy. He's just done his first pro show. But um, I think this was a win for him. I think this was a good, good, um, good, solid third place against some good quality guys. You know, Tony has been eighth at Olympia. Uh, Rafael's been 10th at Olympia. He just got third at the, Olymp- at the Arnold Classic. Yeah. You know, that's a good achievement, you know. So, and he's probably going to get first or second at Detroit this weekend. So this is a new, it's good to see nice new sensations like that living up to the hype. This is the only area. Can, can you see my cursor moving around on there? Or yes, I can, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So this is it, this back thickness. This is all he needs. Everything else is there. Arms, legs, chest. Ooh. It's all there, but look at how much thicker Raphael's back is. And we know Tonio's back. I want to see... I want to see like Lunsford. I want to see a bit more pop in his chest, but I think that'll just come with time. That'll just come with time. Cause like I said, for a, for a first bloody uh, pro show, I mean, you know, like I said, you can see that there's obvious improvements he needs to make, but like I said, it, the bodybuilding is a sport of improvement. So, but imagine him in another year or two. I mean, I, I don't know whether he'll get to the Olympia this year, but you know, if he ends up with, say he doesn't do any more shows and he gets first or uh, say he gets second or something um, yeah. at the Detroit, that's a third and a second. Then he can shut it down, you know, for next year. But um He's really, he's probably going to be relieved that he's, he's, he's you know, because imagine the, the, the weight of expectation, because now he's living in Brazil, obviously got Brazilian sponsors, I believe. Yeah. It's going to be, there's the weight of expectation, especially with guys like Rubio, Crizo, Nick Walker, these new guys that come out and they instantly kind of, you know, make an impact, um, you know, because Vito's got a big fan base. And I think, um, you know, I can imagine he's quite relieved that he's got this first show out the way now. And he's, and also that excited that he's coming into another show just one week later as kind of one of the favorites to, to, to be, you know, first or second. Yeah. I, if I were his guiding him and advising him, I would say, do the show, you know, win or lose that, whatever you take here, take it, shut it down, build that back up. Yeah. Cause next year he could come out gangbusters. Legs. Look at the legs, look at the separation. He's got everything else. Cause thing is, if he just say he gets second yeah. it, and then, you know, he's going to, any shows afterwards, he's probably going to have Tonio in the way anyway. Yeah, yeah. So he's probably going to get, he probably end up with, you know, a second, third, fourth, you know, if he, if he keeps competing. So he's probably, it's unlikely he's going to qualify for the Olympia this year. But I think that's a good thing. Sometimes, you know, when, you know, because otherwise you'll go to Olympia and he might get blown away. Whereas in another year or two years, like, look, 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 how, look how slowly and steadily Rafi Yals, you know, built his career. He's done this over seven years, you mm-hmm. know. You know, it's best to go to the Olympia and make top 10 or, you know, um, like like Raphael did in 22, rather than go and just kind of get annihilated just for the sake of doing the Olympia. So I think a second, if he, him not winning a show with his next couple of shows is probably a blessing for him long term because he's he's done the job. He's got people talking about him now. You know, he's looked good. He's, you know, he's, he's proven that he's not just some Instagram hype bodybuilder that photoshops yeah. his pictures, you know, because he looks, I mean, look, you can see it there. He's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, yeah exactly. And he's got a huge fan base already. That these two shows put him on the map as a legitimate pro threat. Exactly. So he's not just somebody that's got a million fans who don't know what they're looking at hyping him up. Mm-hmm. These are IPB Pro League judges that deemed him second best in the world, a uh, second best, third best at that show. Uh, I want to move on to one other guy because I don't, I don't want to make it seem like these are the only two possible winners. We forgot about the nightmare, Justin Rodriguez. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, let's see if he's got. Okay. So this was a. Uh, 21 hours 21 hours ago, he posted this. Looking fantastic. He's one of my favorites, you know, Justin. Oh, he's got his Boston Pro shirt on. Extra points. Mate, he's, he's one of my favorite pros. I think he's, um, like I said, I remember when it, the, um, I want to say the 2018 Arnold Classic when he took seventh. Mm. And he was kind of a newcomer then. And he, you know, seventh place at the Arnold Classic, even if there's only 10 of them guys, that's a kind of a big achievement. That's going to get people talking about you. And um, I absolutely love the guy. He's been top 10 Olympia twice. And I just, um, I really, you know, took a little bit of a slide last year, but you know, you've seen what can happen. I love the fact he's so tenacious. The fact he just keeps going, and he just keeps, he, he just keeps, you know, he's probably a lot of people have written him off, and I think that's crazy because you know he's he, he's still he's still wanting to do well and, and work hard, you know, and put the effort in, you know. So 
I, I just love Justin. I think he's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I, you know, I, I have to echo what you said as a tenacity. He doesn't give up. He doesn't get a lot of hype. People sort of write him off. Mm -hmm. Even I forgot about him. I didn't. I'm talking mm -hmm. about Vito and I'm talking about uh, Martin Fitzwater. When this guy's won pro shows, he's been top ten in the Olympia. He definitely deserves to be in the conversation as a possible winner for this show. So. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, now I feel like an idiot. But. I, I mean, you know, stranger things have happened. I wouldn't be shocked. Um, actually, that's disrespectful to say stranger things have happened because this is a guy, this is the top. This guy has actually done better at that. How was he? Was he seventh Olympia? No, eighth or ninth. Uh, well, he's he's been firmly in the top 10, and that's something most bodybuilders uh, will never do in their lifetime. I, I'm sure he's got a ninth and an eighth, but he's been top 10 Olympia. So he's up there with Tony has been eighth, Raphael's been 10th. So he's kind of in that, you know, the, 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 the top second call out Olympia guy, sixth through 10th. Yeah. You know, there's a guy that really is kind of in that, he's on that level, the same as kind of Tonio and, and Raphael. So, so to say that he couldn't come in and, you know, really nail it and, and win this, I think is because he's got no injury. He's got no, there's nothing, there's nothing disappearing on him. It's just a matter of peaking right. And um, I mean, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be shocking if he beat um, both these guys. Uh, uh, Martin, I mean, sorry, Martin actually hasn't done he hasn't done top. He hasn't even, Martin hasn't even done Olympia. No, Martin, so, Martin's never beaten Justin. Like, so I was yeah. talking about Tonio then. Tony was not in the bloody show. We don't even know that. But no, right. You know, in terms of um, and Vito hasn't, you know, hasn't even, you know. So yeah, statistically, he's the he's the top ranking guy. Correct. Let's see who else we got in the show. Uh, we got some other good guys. Uh, haven't heard this name in a while. RPG. And his name is Ronald. I like it. There's a Ronald in the show and there's a Harris in the show, but it's not. <laughs> unfortunately, they're not together. It's one day, Ronald. So this is Ronald Gordon. Maybe, they get, maybe they get married. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a Ronald day Harris. ago. Uh, I can't recall what show we, we covered that he was in before. It was, um, was it Tampa a couple of years ago? Yeah, I think it was. Look, look at yeah, that. And he, I was really disappointed because he got like 12th or something, 13th or something. And it was like, shit. Because I, for me, like when you see videos like this, he's so impressive because he's tall, he's wide, he's got a crazy shoulder to waist. He's, you know, there's, if you squint, there's echoes of Dillette there, Paul Dillette, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's something doesn't quite translate to the stage. So I'm really, really I've, had, I've, I've had him on Global a couple of times. I've interviewed him a couple of times. I remember you telling me during the pandemic, he was, jumping over walls and to sneak in gyms to train. And I mean, it was really like you had to hide in a broom cupboard once because someone came in and you had to hide in the broom cupboard you know, in the darkness because he was trying to train in the gym. It was a hilarious story. I like him. Yeah. He's a cool guy. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's, he's just one of those guys that, I mean, look at this. You just think, you know, this guy's, how is he not a front runner? But, um, you know, I hope, I hope he's made some improvements. He trades for psycho fitness, doesn't he? Yeah, that I don't know if it was the lighting there, but I wasn't too I wasn't crazy with that condition I was seeing, but I think that was the lighting. So this was five weeks ago. This was a while ago. Mm, yeah, just... that's what I recall. He said upper by that that V taper is crazy. I, I can see a little, maybe a little bit more legs. He's got yeah. nice sweeping and just a little because look at this. That upper body is so freaky. No gut. No gut. Mm -hmm. Giant, great shoulders, great arms. Yeah. And what a name, Ronald. It's an amazing name. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that caused me problems on the Ronnie tour because I got the tickets, Ronald, bloody Dean Coleman. And Ronnie was like, my name's Ronnie. My mum named me Ronnie. I said, yeah, but on Wikipedia, your name is Ronald. And he went, oh, that's wrong. He said, I was named Ronnie. And it wow. causes problems on the flight. So the bloody Ro Ronald, is the that name is the bane of my life right now. Because I call him Ronald a couple of times. He says, John, my name's not Ronald. Ronald. <laughs> yeah, I always, I because I, I I'm like obviously me. I I assumed he had the same name as me. I saw it many times listed, Ronald Dean Coleman, and that's yeah, not the name. He's it's not. I've got I've got a shot of it because I took a photo of his passport and it's Ronnie. Yeah, see, I don't think my parents knew that was an option. That they could, they could <laughs> Ronnie. I, I would have just been named Ron if I could have chosen. Yeah, yeah. myself. Well, well, it's like I've never understood why Bill and William, are like Bill's short for William. It's not even start. It doesn't even start with the same bloody letter. You're right. Well, there's other ones. If 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 you knew the Latin community at all, everyone's got these <laughs> names that have nothing. Nicknames have nothing. Like my father-in-law is uh, his real name is Filiberto. Filiberto, which is Philip. Everyone okay. calls. Nobody calls him that. I've never heard anyone call him that. Yeah, it's Pepe. Weird. Everybody calls surely, him Pepe. Surely a name's a name. It's like a number is a number. You can't substitute it for something else and call it and say it's the same thing. It's different. Yeah. I mean. So, yeah, Ronnie couldn't quite get his head around that one. Said, no, Ronnie, on. Ronnie's short for Ronnie. He says, yeah, but that's not my name. <laughs> so this is uh, Harry Harris out of the United Kingdom. Yeah. Uh, he's a coach, and most of his posts are of other of his clients, but this is him. So this was three days ago. Uh, headed to the show. 
Nice physique. Size-wise, he's going to have some issues That's with, nice. these, with these bigger guys. <laughs> yeah, this was eight days out. Yeah, I, I would say, uh, Harry, I love your last name. And we're probably related way back distantly, maybe in Wales or something. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to see him beefed up some more he's, mass on that frame. He actually – he's one of these ones – like, you look at here and you just think he almost looks like a classic, like a good classic. Yeah. You know, size-wise and thickness-wise. But when he did – was it – um, it was a show in Europe. I think it was an Italy show a couple of years ago. Yeah. And he actually – I think he got – I'm sure he got a fifth place. And his physique is actually one that actually looks much better on the stage. Like you yeah. look at him here and you think, yeah, he's good, but he looks like he looks no bigger than he's not bigger than Chris Bumstead. You no, know? No. But then you see him on stage and he actually he's actually one of those stage physiques that translates better than he does in pictures. I mean, I always think it's a better thing to be. Like Jamie the Giant, when he used to do his um morning shit house posters out by the toilet, the outside <laughs> toilet in the morning. And he said he would do it in the freezing cold, completely flat, literally rolled out of bed. So you're gonna be your smallest, and you know, it basically tells you the most accurate of how you are, not pumped and you know, and um, and I and I said, well, you know, this is a, that's probably the best way to be. Rather than look amazing on Instagram and you get on stage and it's like, oh, this guy's the other way around. You look at him there and you think, well, he ain't beating no one with that level of thickness. But yeah. I tell you what, he put he fits together really, really well on stage. I was quite, I've seen him a couple of times and we've done live stream reviews. Uh, we did some live watch parties and like he he's really well put together. And I think he's gonna, you know, like he's you know, you think like something like an RPG, you know, Rob P. Gordon will absolutely blow this guy away, but I. I guarantee when he sits, stands next to them, you're mm. going to see things on his physique that aren't on the other guys. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see him. In fact, he's a British athlete. I don't know. I've never really spoke to him. So um, I should really reach out to him because um, I like to support the Brits, you know. Um, and he's um, he's a nice physique, nice physique, yeah. Like I said, he'll look better on stage than he does on Instagram. Well, condition-wise, I mean, he's going to be he's going to be in shape. And that's, you know, you can beat people sometimes because they show up out of shape and you showed up in shape. Yeah. Um, now I'm wondering if a Harris thing is the arms, man, because he looks <laughs> just like me. I always had crazy quads. Everyone loved my quads, and they were yeah. always telling me, dude, your arms, bro. You need to <laughs> poor Ron. Yeah, well, so oh, Harry. Poor Ronald. I, I know I know what you're dealing with, Harry. I know what you're dealing with. All right, we got one more I guy. feel your pain. I feel your pain. <laughs> one more guy on the list. I was not familiar with him. His name is Gabriel. I'm gonna mutilate the pronunciation of this so. Gabriel, G-A-R-I-E-P-Y, Gariepi, maybe? Maybe. Uh, not familiar with him. He is from Canada. So maybe some of you Canadian people are. Yeah, that was in French. Okay, so this was a uh, one chapter, chapter ends, another one beginning. It's like there in the face. Oh, this was an old picture. He's got it pinned. It was 96 weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was a long time ago. Yeah, he's another coach, so that you can see most of his pictures with his clients. Great quads. Very impressed with that. This, uh, if this was a day ago, oh, no. If this was one day ago, five days out, uh, I'm, I'm not liking that condition. No. No, me. No, me. No. no. If you look like that five days out, no. Sorry, Gabriel. Come, I would I would keep keep going and do another show like – to me, this looks like eh. do New York Pro. Do something like New York Pro. Six weeks, he could yeah, really he, sharpen up and really. I mean, I don't know sure. how he's probably. What does he say? What he weighs, or because I mean, I don't know. How, I'm trying to work out his height. I'm just trying to work out whether he'd be a two twelve or whether he's too heavy for that. Well, it's, he's he's doing open here, so I, yeah, okay. I don't know. No, if I he's like, if, if he's like five 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 six, you think well, another six weeks, you could probably suck it down to two twelve. And uh, but if he's taller than that, he's going to be like two forty or something, and he's going to be a, he's going to be a beast. I probably really offended him by saying that. So. Well, uh, if you think somebody's tall, I don't think that's offending them. But uh, I'm going to stop presenting there. So good potential, good potential. And I like so, his Monster Factory top as well. That's where we took Ronnie on the first day of the tour. Monster Factory. They're, everyone at the LGK was wearing their tops. So they're, they're a big clothing company, and they run the gym almost like a hobby. Like they've they've capped it at something like 160 members or something, and there's no women allowed. <laughs> ah, which is like yeah. Kuwait. It's, it's apart like from Kuwait. apart from the guys, uh, the owner's girlfriend, who Amy King, who's like she trains like a guy anyway. She's a beast. Oh, she's Amy also, King. I follow Amy yeah. King. Sure yeah, you. she's lovely. Yeah, she's. I think she's the only woman allowed in there. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. So yeah, right now there's only six people in the lineup. Tony o may or may not jump in. He, he um, needs to. He needs, he to. needs to. So this is happening Sunday, guys. Uh, hostile.com with two S's. That's where you can get a link to all the information. Judging at nine and five Eastern Eastern time and Detroit time are the same right now. Somehow, that's Ron, really odd. Yeah. Do, uh, what's the what if say like the the overall amateur 
looks fantastic. Do you think they'll have an opportunity? Because they've seen that happen many times. Dean White did it, you know, in Portugal. He won the 212. And do you think there's any opportunity if there's a really good amateur to jump in the pro as well, the Open? I've or is never. That, is that? Do you know how that works? Or? I've never seen that happen here. I've seen it happen in the in the European shows. I've never seen them do that here. Okay, okay. Because imagine if you get like a. Because the thing is, I mean, hostile is a big name. Oh, no, it's I'm sorry. A lot of. No, I'm sorry. Because to to it can't happen because the, the amateur show is not a pro qualifier. Joe Seaman, remember Canada? Yeah. No. So this is just an amateur. This is a national qualifier. Oh, okay. So okay. whoever oh, wins so. that, they're not they're not a pro yet. But yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But okay. Because Hostile's going to bring in some big names. You know, it's going to be it's going to probably draw a lot of the amateur show is probably going to be pretty big because Hostiles you know has got a big reach for their podcast and you know a lot of people are going to want to do that show. And the thing is with Fuad, he does everything right. You know, he really puts a lot of thought and effort. And uh, that's I mean that's that's no there's no secret for why he's become so successful so quickly. You know, with everything he's been doing the last few years. He's bringing Samson. Samson's going to be there. We know this. Nice, nice, so, nice. He's been on a Samson. Samson's been on a road trip, hasn't he? Oh, he's and why not, man? Get, you know, yeah, get, yeah. get all around. Still no, still no word on the coach from Samson though. I I've got a feeling. Oh, I think okay. it might be. Ah. And I've heard that. Um, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. Sorry, but I keep things keep popping into my head. Um, what do you think, about Rami and Patrick Tour? Do you think they're going to be working together? And I think I think it's going to happen, and I think Rami's going to do the Olympia this year. Uh, I would love to see that, you know, Patrick, very underrated coach because he doesn't, mm. he does not blow his own horn at all, does not seek the limelight, doesn't do a ton of podcasts. So a lot of people don't even know how good he is, but he's the one he's that took good. Keon Pearson to the 212 Olympia title. He just mm. took Wesley Vissers, a guy nobody was even talking about for the win, to the Arnold Classic Classic Z title. He's damn good, Patrick. He's been a damn good coach for a long time. So I think he's fully capable of taking someone like Rami, who people sort of forgot about. No, we didn't forget about him, but I think a lot of us are thinking he's kind of done. This mm -hmm. is we've seen the best Rami, his best days well, behind him, and a lot of us are kind of hoping. I hope he just, you know, retires gracefully and doesn't try to come back and start looking worse and worse. Well, with Patrick, with Patrick, who knows? Yeah, because Patrick said to me, and I, because I said, I think he sent me a voice note, and he said, um, he said, look, he said, Rami's kind of, because I think he thinks that people are writing him off, or, and he said the words are, he's angry and he's pissed off, ah. and he what, and he's kind of feeling like there's unfinished business. I mean, I like hearing stuff like that because you know that means that Rami's really fired up. Yeah, you know. So, and, and Patrick was kind, of, I forget why. Patrick, I'm sure Patrick didn't say outright that he was going to be working, but I know that they were talking because they're good friends. They've been they've been friends for years. Yeah. And I think he's he's picked Patrick's brains a lot, you know, but Patrick doesn't like, you know, broadcast it because they're friends, you know, he just doesn't, it's just, it's just, you know, it's like a text, you know, or sure. a phone call, you know, yeah. but um, I, I'm, I'm going to put it out there. Actually, the person I spoke to backstage at the, the Arnold UK, where literally Samson was literally about to walk on stage for his posing routine. It was Stefan, boss of Outlaw. Ah. And I said to him, and I said, mate, you do, because I always try to give, I, I, I like the guy and I always go up and shake his hand and say, you're doing great work. I said, it's not, because... I said, I've really seen your profile do this. I said, you know, you're doing good work with us and all these other athletes you're working with. And I said, I said, I tell you what, I said, um, you know, I said, the, is there a chance you might be working with this guy? And I pointed to Samson. Ronnie was right next to me. And um, and I, I won't say what he, I can't, I won't say what he said because I can't remember what he said, but it was quite cryptic. <laughs> and, it, and he kind of just like did a little wink as if to say, well, maybe, maybe, maybe you know, and I, maybe. He, he was kind of, because I think a lot of coaches are probably speaking to Samson now to say, so, so they're probably hoping that, you know, Samson's probably sounding a lot of them out, which is smart. Mm. So there's, I, I, if I was going to put money in, I think he would be him or maybe Chris Aceto maybe, but um, I think um, I could see him working with someone like a Stefan, because don't forget that there's a connection between Urs, Urs and Samson are good friends mm. in Amps. Uh, us and Stefan, uh, that's his coach. So I'd imagine that it doesn't take a genius to figure out that those that that could easily synergize. Yeah, let let's. Well, I'm sure we'll find out soon. I don't think they're gonna. If they're working together, it's it's not going to be able to be kept secret for very long. You can't keep yeah. secrets in this industry. We're like we're <laughs> yeah. like old. Uh, I'm terrible at keeping them. <laughs> no, actually, that do you know? Actually, that's not true because I would say I said this uh, years ago. I said. You know, when it was just magazines before the whole digital thing came along. And I said, I'll be honest. I said, I do, you know, I, I, I know a lot. I said, talk a lot. I said, but 80% of what I hear and it's told by people that do trust me, because the thing is, that's why I'm trusted. Because like I said, I've been around that long. And if I was someone that was, you know, told something in confidence and then blabbed it, you know, that would soon get out that I'm, you can't tell me anything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and I, I think 80% of what I've ever heard, I said, it never goes any further and literally doesn't go any further. You know, maybe he might tell Maya the cat or something, but um, <laughs> he, he's never usually too interested in what I've got to say anyway. 
Yeah, I, I'm that way now, but I wasn't always that way. And it took me many times, more times than I care to admit, of people saying, I told you not to tell anyone. Because mm. you know, I've been in the industry like yourself from a very young guy. I was 21 when I started full time. Got to be careful because people get pissed off. The thing is, people tell you stuff that could affect their career if you told exactly. people. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like I told you know you messed up that opportunity with a sponsor or a call or yep. something or you yep. know because you've got if somebody says don't this doesn't go any further I don't right. tell no one. Yeah. Now I know that you know I'm a I'm a I'm a hard learner. It takes me a while. A slow learner, I should say. But I, I figured I figured out. And it's so easy to burn bridges in this industry. It's mm -hmm. everybody knows everybody. It's so incestuous. You think you're never gonna have to work with somebody again. Wrong. Mm -hmm. There might come a day when you need to work with somebody you thought you would never have to work with again. Or you know, yeah, yeah. And I don't like getting told off. I hate it. I hate it. Because I remember um actually a few years ago, Tim Gardner gave me some information on a show of somebody that was competing, and I think I put it on the MD group chat. Yeah. And then I think you guys put it out and T Tim was really pissed off with me. He was like, I told you not. Thing is, since then, he's never shared any that kind of information with me because he's probably <laughs> thought, well, I'm not going to bother because it's like, you know, because sometimes, you know, with especially with like competitors, you know, it can scare other competitors off or sure, it could sure. prevent other people coming in. You know, if somebody says that, they're saying, don't say anything for a reason. It's just for your knowledge, you know? So well, now I know. At the age of 54. No snitching. No snitches get stitches. <laughs> I finally figured it out in my middle age. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there, mate. We're getting there. Yeah, but not to uh, blow smoke up your ass or anything like that. But, I mean, that shows your passion that it bothers you that much. There are people that, are, that do podcasts and they, they call themselves, you know, they, they're making a living off this industry. And, and some of them don't really care about the athletes. They don't care about the con It's They're just doing it because – this is something they found out they could make money at or whatever, but they're not, they have no real passion or connection to it. Whereas someone like yourself, me, this is, we live and breathe this shit. We love the, we love the, we love the sport. We, we appreciate everything the promoters do, the athletes. It's a tough sport that does not get a lot of outside recognition at all. It gets a lot of mocking and, and uh, disrespect from the, from the outside yeah. world. So, yeah. you know, anything we can do to keep uplifting it and spreading it in a positive light, Let's keep doing that. Right. All right. Well, power hour has gone on far beyond an hour. So we're going <laughs> to call hours. <laughs> power hours. Yeah. We should just say power roughly an hour. Uh, that's it, guys. Uh, please, if you like this stuff, subscribe, like, and share. doesn't cost you a damn thing. Helps me out. Helps to build this channel. We have, uh, I'm very, very fortunate to have guys like uh, Giles help me out every week. And uh, the more the, this channel grows, the better we can make the content. So please do that. Giles, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And, when you get uh, your shows going again, uh, I'd love to be part of that, of course. As I'm well. Honestly, man, I'm too bloody busy. <laughs> like a couple of, it was only a few weeks ago where I was going crazy and really stressing because I, I'm feeling like I was wasting my life because I wasn't busy enough. Mm. And now you should see, like, I mean, I, I mean, I kind of needed the Ronnie tour to be successful to relaunch them, yeah. but it's like a high profile guy, one like that, for it to that to go well. I mean, it's I, I, I even I underestimated the. You know the, the the sort of impact, the positive impact it would have on on other tours and other things coming from that. It's gone honestly, mate. You'll see stick stick close to my Instagram, and obviously I'll be mentioning things on here from week to week because there's so much going on right now. Um, I mean, honestly, normally I've you know me, Mr. Rainman, with the memory and stuff. I'm struggling to keep up with all the different things that are coming in and dates and time. I mean, I've, I've, I'm, I'm literally, yeah, it's going to be an exciting year. It's going to be the best year ever for uh, Tiger Tops. Awesome, man. I want to be busy like you soon. All right. Well, you will be. You will be. You're doing great, mate. You're doing great. And like I said, you know, we, you, we're all here to support you, mate. So, you know, sure. that's, that's a given, you. mate, you know? All right. Well, thank you again, Giles. And everybody, thanks for watching. Lots of great content on this channel. Please check it out. Uh, trying, to, trying to do the best job putting out great content for you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you that watches. Leave some comments below. Love getting back to you. Love hearing the feedback on what I can do to make it better. If you want to argue, insult, whatever you want to do, leave it down there. It's all good. So that's it. Thanks for watching another episode of Power Hour with myself and Giles Tiger Thomas. We'll see you right here next time.